scheduled meeting. Um, call this meeting to order. And Commissioner Hadley, would you mind doing the invitation? And then we'll do the pledge. If everybody will stand. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank Second item is to adopt the agenda. We do need to make a addition as well as a removal. Um, we need to add under new business to have a resolution for a boat ramp on the Flint River, supplement river to river trails, to approve a lease for DNR for boating access, and that is all under one. So if we will add that to number 21 under new business. And then we need to actually remove item number one under unfinished business um, at the request of the applicant. They have decided to cancel this for this summer and will resume their request next year. Anybody have any questions on that? Hearing none, I have a motion to accept the changes to the agenda. So moved. Have a motion and a second. Second. Motion is second. All in favor? All right. All five. Thank you. all Sorry, I have to turn around and look at y'all. Okay. All right. Next item on the agenda is for the minutes of the June 23rd regular meeting at 6 p.m. We did. Have you all had a chance to read those minutes? Any changes? I move we accept the real. Okay. We have a motion to accept. We have a second. Motion by Buster, second by Miss Mary. All in favor? Motion carries. All right, next we have municipal comments. I'm trying to see. I don't see any cities on there. I don't know. I see a 672. Is Mayor Blood on? anything for us, Mayor Glover? No, I just keep the safe. Thank you very much. You too. I can't wait to tell you that everybody just be back. Thank you. You too. I don't see any other municipalities, constitutional officers, sheriff's right. right. Thank you very much. No department heads tonight. All right. We'll move to item number seven, public hearing. Um, do I have a motion to go into public hearing? Something. Have a motion, have a second. Right. Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. We are in executive session at 6.04. Oh, oh, yeah, public hearing. Sorry. Look, it's been so long, I forget what it is. I can stand tonight. We're glad. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. I'm glad to see everybody back in, in the uh, saddle, as they say, and good to see some of our administrative folks here with us. 
Um, we have two cases to present tonight. First one is case number eight. Um, we have Jerry Lentz, who is an agent for Jacob Lentz. We actually have both in attendance tonight. I don't know which would prefer to speak. Okay. Um, they're requesting the rezoning of 5.85 total acres from LDR, which is your five acre minimum, to RD, a two acre minimum, for the purpose of creating a new two acre lot for a new uh, 2,138 square foot manufactured home. The remaining two acres in that original 5.85 will contain, right now, there's, it's, it's like two rental mobile homes, that will, and one will be removed right away. The other has a tenant in it. And upon that tenant's vacating of that property, then that mobile home also will be removed from the property. But for the time being, we have to try to create a place for this gentleman's new home. The current parcel is known as Map and Parcel 9310 and it's located on Lion Lane near Luthersville, Georgia. Each of the two plus acre lots shall have a minimum of 200 feet of road frontage on Lion Lane, which meets the zoning requirements on road frontage for the RD zoning. The surrounding properties there are a mix of large and small tracts, some currently two acres and the larger ones go up to in excess of 100 acres. The property values of the neighboring parcels will not be adversely affected. The property value on new parcels will increase the value with the improvements on the property. No excessive or burdensome use of the existing street, transportation, utilities, or schools. The staff recommendation and the uh, recommendation from the Planning Commission is to approve the rezoning from LDR to RD on the entire 5.85 acres for the creation of two parcels containing of no less than two acres each. Pardon? It's in Buster's. We have case number 10, 2020, Gene King. He is an agent for the property owners, L.C. and Don Atkins. And they are requesting the rezoning of four acres from the LDR, five-acre minimum zoning, to RD, two-acre minimum, to create two two-acre lots. The property is located on Georgia Highway 85 and Split Rail Farm Road, and it's known as Map and Parcel 162-042. The proposed lot known as 13 Split Rail Farm Road, which is the one nearest highway, has, been, has already been cleared of an older mobile home and will be the site of a new 1,700 square foot single family residence. The lot known as 43 Split Rail Farm Road will be cleared of a mobile home at a later date and be the site of another new 1,700 square foot single family residence. These surrounding properties along Split Rail Farm Road also consist of two to six acre parcels. These property values on the neighboring parcels will not be adversely affected. 
The property value on the newly created lots will increase with these new residential improvements. There will be no excessive or burdensome use of the existing streets, transportation, utilities, or schools. The staff recommendation and the recommendation from your planning commission is to approve the rezoning from LDR to RD on these four acres for the creation of two two-acre lots. And I believe we have Mr. King and his daughter Courtney here tonight to represent. Yeah, what it is, Mr. Atwell and his wife on the property. There's four acres there. I had bought some block of land from on Timber Ridge and built a house earlier this year. So I called him and said, you want to sell that lot? I need a place to go. And he said, I can't sell it to you because it's got a trailer on it with a gentleman living there. He, he doesn't even pay rent anymore, but they just can't. They're not going to put him out. He's in bad shape. So I came up with the idea, well, y'all are needing money. You don't want to put him out yet, so maybe we could split it in half. Somebody interrupted or just oh, okay. And so my suggestion was to him, hey, why don't we see if the county will let us split it to two lots? Sell me one now. That helps you. His wife started chemo yesterday. I'm not telling you all that for like sympathy. I'm just giving you why they're trying to sell it. I said, you sell me the lot now. I can move forward. And then whenever the gentleman passes on or whatever he moves or whatever he does later, then he's already committed to sell me that one at that time. And I'll just build another one. So uh, he's, and he's, they're dealing with a lot right now. He said, if you want to deal with going through zoning, going through the commissioners, and you want to do all that, and you get it approved, I'll sell it to you. He goes, I don't have time for it. So that's why we're here. Um, it's, it's a beautiful lot. It's got oak trees already on it. It had a trailer there. So he took the trailer down, cleaned it up. And he these, both these trailers have been there since 1986. So he actually could put another trailer right back there, hook the power right back up to it, and rent it out for eight, nine hundred dollars $900 a month. But we're going to put a, in the house we're fixing to put there, we're going to list it for two thirty four nine. You know, so it's 17, 1800 square foot, architectural shingles, hardy plank, granite countertops, crown molding, uh, big, big covered back porch, covered front porch. I mean, it's, it, it will be a really nice, good looking home. And uh, I've been to building this house. This will be my 90th time to build this house. It's called the Courtney Plan, named after my daughter. So that's the only one I ever built because it sells quick. <laughs> so, well, she's, she's figuring to get her real estate license, so she's just kind of learning all this stuff about how you go and get something changed or don't change and so forth, so she tagged along. So that's what we're trying to do. Uh, if y'all approve it, we'll have a house there. I think the, uh, Clint Flint and them, they're, uh, they're ready to go uh, survey it this week. Could I put everybody kind of on schedule? Because I've been waiting five months for this, almost six months because of COVID. So I got everybody on standby, so if it's good with y'all, then we're going to rock and roll with it and have a house there and have a tax payer there by the end of the, this year. So, uh, so that's what we'd like to do. Shirley, is that your district? Yes, it's District 1. Do you have any comments or anything before we go out? Do I have a motion to come out of public hearing? So moved. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. We are out of public hearing at 613. Commissioner Hines, what is your pleasure? I would like to make a motion that we accept the uh, rezoning from the planning and zoning board, uh, making this into two lots, two acre lots. And that's in the form of a motion, right? Yes. All right. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. King. Y'all have a good day. Y'all continue to try to stay healthy if you can. Mr. Chair? Uh, I got a text asking if you all could speak into the mic. Uh, they can't hear you. Someone texted and asked me if you all could speak into the mic. I'll speak. I'll move it closer. Is, is that better? Can y'all hear better now? All right. I can hear you okay. Okay. Uh, I just couldn't hear you. All right. Thank you. We'll move on to our next item, number eight, unfinished business, and appointment to the planning commissioner board to fill unexpired term district four. That is actually mine. I make a motion that we table this again. Um, do I have a second? 
second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. That's all of the unfinished business. We'll move on to item number nine, new business. And number one under new business is Arkeas Greer, request to consider the removal of an appointment to a board or authority. Mr. Greer, if Skip, if you'll unmute him. Okay. Can you hear me? We can, Arkeas. Go ahead. Yes, I think I spoke the last time. Do you want to see me too? Or no? We don't. It's fine. Okay. So the last time I am requesting the, the removal of, of, of Mr. Dwayne Allen because of the uh, situation that I explained and passed out to you all when I came. Um, and and, and that, is, that is what I requested for you all to consider that. I'm not sure if you all will come will give me your thoughts today. But, yeah, that's, that's, that's just some, somebody we don't need to be representing the county. Okay, is that is that your full statement to us, Mr. Greer? Well, do I need to restate it? Because uh, do I need to add on from last time? Do I need to? No, I think we all remember when you came and spoke to us on the 23rd of June. I do believe that was the date. Um, so I guess what yeah. we'll do is just turn it over to our attorney right now for just a moment for some advisement. Okay, yeah, that'll work. Can everybody hear me? Can you all hear Michael? Hello? Yeah. Been nodding? Okay. Um, so the board asked us to look into the legal relationship between the, in this case, the Water Sewer Authority, but also other authorities and the county. Um, and you have to understand that the authority in this case, the, the Water and Sewer Authority specifically, is a separate legal entity from the county. It's created by legislation that passes at the state level. And although the county board has the ability to appoint someone, where that legislation is silent as to removal, the county authority, the county, in this case, the, the county commissioners do not have any authority to remove a person from said board. Um, so they, you know, they're basically appointed for the entirety of their term and cannot be removed by the, the, the board of commissioners. Um, they are allowed to be replaced when their term expires, but, but really there's no authority otherwise. So. And I'll go a little further on that. Did everybody hear the attorney? Is everybody able to hear? Okay. What, yes. we will do, what we will do as a board is we'll look into handling this with whatever authority that we may have um, outside of what our attorney has stated, and we will look into it further. And that is probably all that we can do, but we will look into the situation further. Is, is this, 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 is what, this on my behalf? I mean, this is what my business? So can I ask this, if, if that's the case, I think I heard him say that, that he will have to finish his term. If by any chance that, that, that his actions and remarks end up, end up having the, the people that he's representing uh, have them in a legal matter, and that all of that could have been avoided, what, what, would, what, would, what would be the result of that? Would, would he be able to? I don't know if I'm right. Okay, because exactly. I'm, okay. I don't know if I'm following exactly what you're asking, Arkeas. Yeah. Okay, what I'm asking is, is I think I think the the what I'm trying to say. I think his actions and words can can initially have have the sit have the people that he represent in trouble from his remarks that he's making. So I'm asking, would the city, would the county be be able to be held? for his actions? No. Or are they willing to be responsible for his actions since he can't be removed? You're, you're asking that if his personal statements um, can create liability for the county? Well, not, for yeah, yeah not, not just the personal statement, but the threats and the harassment, right. The threats and the harassment. As, the, as I mentioned, the Water Authority is a separate uh, legal entity, so it is not part of the, the county's governing body. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah, it makes sense. So it would not have any repercussions on the county itself because it stands as a separate legal entity. Does that answer your question? Okay, yeah, it, yeah, it does. It answered it. <clears throat> 
All right. So as I stated, we will look into with whatever authority we have, Arceus, and we will go from there, okay? Yes, sir. I appreciate you. You too. You stay safe. All right, you too. All right. Is there anything further on that? All right. We will move on under view business to item number two, to approve resolution to support the Meriwether County Recreational Complex for the County of Meriwether and confirm allowing the chairman to sign. Sign. We've already talked about this is in support of, uh, uh, I think, uh, Ms. Barry, I know, has been working on uh, okay. a... Uh, yes, speaker, uh, this is a resolution that we need to move forward with our DNR for a grant. They asked, and I think we spoke of this when we did a workshop uh, with the uh, board before. So this is that resolution I'm asking that we pass that we can move forward with our... Uh, Trying to get a grant from DNR. And this has been signed, and we simply just need to uh, confirm it and have it put into the minutes. So do we need to make a motion? All right. Ms. Mary, do you want to make a motion? A motion that we pass this resolution to move forward with uh, applying for the grant. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. Next item. Yeah, it was all five. Item number three under new business. Approve the 2020-2021 ACCG IRMA renewal and confirm allowing chair to sign. This again is technical work catching up with the National Department of Protection. This is for our property and liability insurance for discussion. Hearing that, I'll make a motion that we do approve um, the ACC 2020 and 2021 ACCG IRMA renewal and allow the chair to sign. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. Sorry. All right, next item under new business, item number four. Appointment to fill an unexpired term on the Recreation Advisory Board for District 1. Commissioner Hines? Uh, yes. Um, uh, we had someone that was on the board, and he sent an email, and I forwarded it to everyone. For personal reason, he had to step down. So I would like to nominate Mr. Mike Roberts. I sent the board and everyone a copy of his resume. Uh, I think he's more than qualified, and he's already working in the county with some other programs. Uh, with youth and, and recreation. So at this time, I'd like to put a motion on the floor that we appoint Mr. Mike Roberts to the Recreation Advisory Board representing Gay and Alberton area. I think Mr. Robinson was on the call earlier, so I don't know if he's still on the call. But anyway, I want to put that in a motion. I do see him. He's on there. Welcome. We will. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Welcome aboard. All right, item number five under new business is to provide a recommendation for an at-large appointment to Region 4 EMS Council. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, at, uh, at our last meeting I mentioned when I had uh, talked to the Region 4 EMS Director that there was an opportunity to have an at-large appointment and we don't have one for Meriwether County and uh, they were recommending that we do, uh, you know, some nominations on that and, and, and apply for uh, that position. Spoke with uh, Mr. Vincent Harris again today, and he indeed still has that position, and uh, he has sent me some information on uh, transferring uh, and getting him a resume of someone that would be interested in that, and uh, it really would be good to have someone who's in the healthcare field uh, with some, uh, some background and knowledge because that's really what they will do is, is uh, be able to provide guidance for, you know, the, the EMS and emergency management and uh, uh, ambulance units and things of that nature. So uh, we have got the, the documents we need to be able to make that application. Uh, we just need to, uh, to look at an appointment to be able to fill that position. Mr. Chairman, 
Chair, I believe, Commissioners, I believe um, Commissioner Threadgill sent us um, an email stating his interest in doing this, and with his background, it certainly sounds like something that he could he could be a benefit to the council. If it's, Please, the board. I'd actually be honored to do it. Is that was the motion. I'll make a form of motion. Okay. I'll second. So we have a motion and a second to appoint me to the Region 4 EMS Council. Do we have motion and a second? All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. All five. All right. Item number six, fiscal year 2020 budget amendment number two. Uh, he, he did send in the budget amendments. Uh, the number two for the uh, 2020 is for uh, animal shelter grants in the amount of uh, $22,450. And you have some documentation in your uh, packets concerning that. We do. He's already provided all of this information to us. Is there anything further we need to do just to accept? All right. Have you all had time to read this or have any questions? Okay. All right. Do I have a motion to accept? I'll make a motion. Move. Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. Item number 12, discuss proposed farm brewery ordinance. Chairman, commissioners, uh, we've been working on that uh, uh, farm brewery ordinance. Uh, we think it's, uh, it's a good business here, and I think uh, uh, Mr. Harper's actually uh, on the line. He's been working with us as well on this ordinance. Uh, we, we're not quite ready to be able to finalize this tonight, but I think we will be ready to have it presented at your next meeting in two weeks from uh, today to be able to uh, be considered and accepted. What this would do is it would allow for the establishment of a farm brewery. We already have a uh, farm winery ordinance in place. This would create the ability to have a farm brewery and uh, the products would be grown on the farm. Uh, there would be very little traffic. It would be a custom uh, brewed beer. And uh, 
very nice setup. I think it'd be a great business, uh, and it's a, kind of an agribusiness as well. And uh, uh, we think it'd work out very well. And we're, we're trying to kind of utilize some of the points of our farm winery. But I know there's a lot of things that the state allows for farm winery that we're going to have to, you know, to address. But uh, I do think we can have this ready for the board's uh, review and hopefully approval at your next meeting. And uh, I know Mr. Harper is, is, is on the line. If we could, could uh, unmute him. Yeah. See if he's got any other comments. Star six, Mr. Taylor. Taylor, if you could hit star six, uh, you could speak to us, buddy. Okay. Mr. Hart, if you can hear me, if you'll just do pound six, that should unmute you. Star six. setbacks that uh, didn't allow us to get quite as much done. But we'll have this ready to go. I think Kathy's already done the advertisement on this, and uh, we should have this ready uh, at your next meeting. So my recommendation would be to uh, place this on your June the is it 20, uh, August 12th meeting. I'm about behind. I, believe me, I'm more than a month behind. But uh, yeah, the August 12th meeting uh, for uh, you know, for discussion and uh, hopefully proof. Okay, hearing that recommendation, I have a motion to add this to the August 12th meeting. So moved. Second. 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 Thank you. Thank you. I have another 13 discussion proposed subdivision. Yes, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, we, we have, uh, uh, while we were out, I uh, did have an opportunity to talk to uh, each board member over the phone, uh, make notes, uh, take notes of what you guys wanted to see in both the subdivision ordinance and the zoning ordinance. And um, we're ready to put those together. I was hoping to have that uh, completed where you could have a draft form tonight. Uh, uh, just simply ran out of time. Uh, I would recommend that we uh, set a public hearing for both the subdivision and the zoning ordinance. Uh, Kathy, our advertisement time is Okay, at the end of uh, August. Okay. Could we set, uh, Michael, we could set a special time for this, couldn't we? As long as you're within, what, 15 to 45? Okay. I would, I would prefer to actually do this, uh, not wait till the end of, uh, of August. I would prefer to look at a, at a sooner date. That's at the evening meeting. Maybe we could uh, set it for like 4:30. Uh, that would allow us to be able to get it in and, and ahead of time to discuss. Are y'all okay to do it the 25th at 4:30? On the fifth? Yes, ma'am. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Thank y'all. So, hearing that recommendation, I have a motion to add this to the August 25th. Second. Second. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 14, special focus on the board. And 
I would have the same recommendation on, on that to set it for the right at, at 430 because those two, you know, they actually uh, kind of go together. Yeah. So here then, do I have a motion to also move and discuss the focus on the set to have a meeting uh, and of course you know, we've had some, some setbacks from there uh, and I'd like to get back on and, and start moving toward getting that East Block meeting back on the schedule. Uh, we haven't made a lot of progress on it because we, we've been out of the office but we'll, we'll back now and we will. Uh, I know y'all originally had chosen a Saturday to do that with. Uh, if, if you wanted to look at uh, maybe the 8th or the 15th uh, of August. The 8th is the county, the two county back to the fascists. Okay. I, that, I'm involved in and I'm just others maybe. Okay. Well. 15th, would that work? Ms. Mary, Ms. Shirley, the 15th. Uh, 
uh, they have discounted that down to like 254 or 554. And that includes uh, the, the grapple as well. You can actually put a rotary bore, a limb shear on this thing, uh, a lot of different things. The pricing for the new model, if we didn't buy last year's model and this is the last one they have, is going to go up about $20,000 over its cost. Uh, this is a piece of equipment that we would like to be able to utilize with uh, and purchase through the t splice and SPLOS funds to be able to, uh, to have uh, a year-round capability to do road and ditch work because that's one of our biggest complaints we have. In the wintertime, we, we cannot get the uh, grading equipment out. It messes up the road, but this will be able to travel on its own. You don't, you don't have to, you don't have to, uh, oh, it's attached to a truck and, uh, and all the units together. The truck comes with it. Yeah, in these trucks. Yes, it'll have the truck and uh, everything, so you'll be able to drive it from spot to spot. Now, they make a, a different one unit uh, that goes up to about 350. But uh, I think anybody that would work in public works would tell you this is one of the best pieces of equipment they ever had. Uh, Warranty would be, uh, I think it's a 24 months, 3,000 hour warranty and uh, for that's on uh, total machine and attachment uh, let's see standard warranty uh, you get an extended warranty for three and uh, we, we might want to do that it, but it would be on the, the truck would also have the warranty as well and uh, let's see, standard warranty 24 months 3,000 hours But you would have a warranty on the uh, on the chassis hull as well. And so that's something we need to decide tonight. Uh, not necessarily tonight, uh, but I do want you guys to be thinking about it. Uh, I, I don't want to lose that ability to that's purchase. That's what I was going to say. We don't. If we're going to get one, we don't yeah. want to miss the chance of getting saving right. twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. I, w I would hate for it to sell. So can that piece of equipment it could go a long way to do it. We had to cut the top out of it, but it probably could after that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we do. We have a lot to do. And, uh, I'd just like to say uh, they did have someone to come in and do a demonstration to Public Works. We have talked about this maybe a year and a half ago. It is a definitely good piece of equipment for the county, and it will allow us to cover a lot of areas without less manpower. So I would like to make a recommendation that we move forward with this this evening. Okay. So we have a motion, right? That's a form of motion. Yes, it is. So we have a motion. We have a second. Second. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Thank you all. Y'all y'all made uh, public works very happy. We appreciate that. All right. Number eighteen. This is a uh, is a continued lease with uh, with the DFAX building. Uh, had a chance to read over it uh, today, really for the first time. It's a pretty standard lease. I would like our attorneys to look at it before uh, we finally execute it. It, it does call for a ninety thousand dollar a year. Uh, uh, somewhere a ninety thousand dollar a year payment to us. Seventy-five, uh, seven thousand five hundred dollars a month, um, fixed rent, and uh, uh, this contract actually needs to be updated because it has last year's dates on it. But uh, it's pretty much the same contract that we've had uh, for the last several years. And uh, if the board chooses to do that, I would I would recommend that y'all approve the uh, chairman's signature on this uh, contingent upon legal review and our final review. This will be a one-year contract, so you'll have, you'll get to look at this again in uh, next June. I make a motion to um, accept the renewal of the defects and allow the chairman to sign upon approval of um, legal. Okay. I have a motion to have a second. I second that. Motion to have a second. All in favor? Motion Thank you all. Item 
Yes. No, uh, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm used to saying that. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I apologize. But uh, we have a Halls Mill Road, and I've, I've had this documentation for a little while. It's been one of those we just hadn't got around to being able to get back for you guys. Halls Mill Road uh, is has been a road that we've had some controversy on. Some of the owners there, uh, you know, want to block the road. Some don't. The uh, three of the owners there have asked that the board take a look at Halls Mill and consider whether or not Halls Mill was ever properly closed. Halls Mill came before the board of commission back uh, a long time ago, 99, and I've got a file on this somewhere, but uh, it came before the board, and there was a request made to close the road. And the board just simply took action and closed the road. Well, that was not the proper procedure because there really wasn't any advertising or anything. Shortly thereafter, uh, there was a letter received by the county signed by Mr. Ken Gordon uh, because his, his wife actually owned some property on that road. And he says that please be advised that she was not given notice of the fact and objects to the same. In the last 30 days, she's expended money on the bridge and improvement road, and they ask them to reconsider the decision. Well, uh, I had actually talked to uh, either Nathan or Michael, uh, one about it, and you know the issue was, was it properly closed? And uh, based upon everything we have found, there seemed to be no advertisement. It came before the board, they made a request, and there was a motion, and they closed it. So the the citizens out on uh, Halls Mill Road simply asked for the board to set a hearing to determine whether or not it is a closed road. And uh, I think you would go through that just like you would go through the abandonment process by advertising, have a hearing, whether or not it has ceased to uh, serve a public purpose. Uh, they have indicated, the owners there have indicated, hey, they would make repairs to the road, do whatever, but they feel like it uh, has been and should have always been a county road and it was not uh, properly closed. And uh, if the board feels like that uh, uh, that's something we need to address, my recommendation would be that you set a hearing, uh, almost like a road abandonment, and uh, you put signs up and you allow uh, the owners to come in and make a uh, you know, a plea as to uh, whether or not it's, uh, it's closed, whether they want it closed, and whether or not it has ceased to serve a uh, public purpose. I know their homes, I think there was a home built down at the end of that here not too long ago. Yeah, I've, I've looked at the, I've looked at the action taken uh, and uh, Beverly, it, it did, I don't think it did the ordinance. I, I, I think the ordinance, even back in, uh, I think it was 99, the ordinance required you to advertise. And uh, you just couldn't go out and somebody I come up and say, why don't you close the road and close the road. And I, I agree. And I, and I have looked at that. I do have the uh, minutes. And, uh, you know, I know uh, we closed some roads. We went through that advertisement uh, procedure. So all we need to do is? Need to uh, just uh, set a hearing to determine uh, the abandonment of Paul's Road. Or? Do we need to give them some other you, you don't have to. You can set that at, at, at any time. I would suggest that maybe we just set it as part of your regular meeting and uh, probably to get advertisement in probably your last meeting of August. Ms. Perry, Commissioner, y'all have Yes. Yeah. What's well, so don't have anything. I, I can hear you well, but I have Mr. Gay comes off very bubble. Oh, okay. God, I know. I'm trying to say, I can hear you well. I can hear you really good, but yeah. there, for some reason, we I can't hear you. But I don't have a problem with um, you just want to do it at a later date, advertise it, that's what you're saying. Yeah. We, 
pretty much set up a meeting uh, to consider the abandonment. We basically go through the abandonment procedures uh, to be sure that they were properly done. And, and if you guys choose to abandon or choose to consider it open, that would be your decision at that point. But at least you would have covered the, uh, the legal grounds of, uh, of how to close the road because it does not appear that uh, the proper procedure was, was uh, followed. I, I'm good with that. I'm, I'm fine with that as well. Thank you. Can I add a motion? Yes. I'll make a Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, yeah, as you guys know, we mentioned in the last meeting that uh, Meriwether County had been approved for a Georgia uh, Road and Tollway Authority grant and a uh, loan. And uh, this project was uh, slated for the county line road. Uh, would include uh, bridge replacement and widening and also the paving. Uh, we were approved for a $150,000 loan and a $100,000 grant for that project. Uh, I have now received uh, from the State Tollway Authority, Road Tollway Authority, a, a huge packet of uh, documentation that we have to be able to fill out in order to take, uh, to take this on. There is a 1% loan origination fee, that would be $1,500 uh, based upon the uh, award. And of course, there's no interest until we, until we start drawing. And there's a lot of uh, documents that will need to be signed. And again, I would like to have an opportunity to go over those. I just got those recently. Uh, I'd like to have an opportunity to go over that with the attorney. Just get those uh, filled out. Uh, and I'd like to ask the board to, to give the chairman authorization to sign and to uh, allow us to be able to pay the 1% loan origination fee, which is $1,500. So, based on the recommendation of the county manager, the motion to accept this and to allow the chair to sign after the legal has reviewed the application. So moved. Have a motion to write a second. Second. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, you do have the resolution there in front of you. We uh, we went back in today and just made some uh, you know some changes to this to uh, clarify and make sure it you know read right from Meriwether County. And uh, uh, it had referenced uh, down in the last paragraph. It had referenced a, a different agreement, but we changed it over to read. Uh, well, my copy doesn't, but the corrected copy should read. Uh, that it is uh, a lease to the Department of Natural Resources for boating access. That's what should be in the, uh, in the final version of the resolution. And uh, the reason they want a resolution along with the lease is uh, they'll have a document in hand where all five commissioners will have signed that document agreeing to the lease. Now, the lease is a 25-year lease. Uh, and they will install a new boat ramp, and I think the one that's there is in, in pretty bad shape. Uh, we would uh, have to include the property that we already own, the property that you guys accepted tonight. Uh, this would begin upon execution. It would run for 25 years. Uh, we'll have to flag that somewhere because I probably won't be here to, to mention that to you guys. But uh, what they're looking to do is they're, they're looking to set it up and, uh, you know, improve the facility. They want to turn it into uh, part of the uh, uh, Flint River Trails. I know Mr. Buster and Carolyn, I know y'all have worked very hard on, uh, on that, and we appreciate it. Um, the county would, of course, uh, be responsible for, you know, inspection at time to time, picking up trash, 
you know, just keep helping the state keep it clean. There would be some signage there that the state would put up. If we wanted to put any other signage up, we'd have to get their approval to do that. But uh, this is pretty much a, a standard lease. Uh, there were a few little changes that we made, but they didn't want us to change too many since uh, it was their regular documentation and their regular lease. So uh, we think this is a good thing. They're going to take over and uh, spend some money there that, uh, of course, that uh, we won't have to do, but it will benefit the citizens of Meriwether County. And, of course, uh, it will uh, need to be approved by the board. And then, of course, uh, the uh, DNR commissioner will need to approve it as well. And then at that point in time, the lease will be effective. Let me add a couple things to that, Mr. Gate. The state at this point are intending to build a very state-of-the-art boat launch there. Right. It will also have ADA access to the boat ramp, and they will redo the parking lot for us. They're looking just immediately spending about $250,000 down there, which we do not have. Right. And they're, again, when you start getting those permits to work on the bank of that river, it's a very slow, long, drawn-out thing. Right. And it's much better to let them do it if they're willing. And I know we've had, we've had to make some repairs on that ramp in the last several years. Uh, we have heavy floods, you know, people fall off at the end, the, the, the riprap will move. And so uh, this will be, you know, very good to do it. It's a, you know, it, it'll, it'll bring more attention also to uh, Flint River and Meriwether County and uh, hopefully help out with some tourism. So our recommendation would be execution of the resolution and uh, execution of the lease. <coughs> To the, to the Georgia Department of Natural Resources. I'm good. Good. Just one other thing, we need to get that to them for their August meeting, if at all possible, so we need to do a pretty quick turnaround. We'll uh, okay. we'll get it to them. You guys signed it tonight, but I have it tomorrow. Okay. So here's the recommendation for today. We've got a motion to accept the 25 year lease and for the chair to sign the lease. Right, so we'll need approval of the resolution and approval of the lease. So moved. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Motion to have a second. All in favor? Motion to carry. Thank you. We just y'all. need to get it signed by all of us, though, you said. Right. Right. On the, <coughs> on the resolution. All right, so next item is the report of the finance director bill. We'll send all that to us today. Right. Um, so anybody have any questions from what we will send us out today? No. No. Thank you. Next item is report from the county administrator. Yes, sir. Commissioners, thank y'all. Uh, just a uh, couple of things. I've got so much paper here. Uh, our uh, May and June methane monitoring at the landfill was fine. We didn't have any issue with that. Uh, we do have an opportunity for some more funding to apply for uh, on the uh, COVID CARE Act, and we'll be working on that. Uh, GDOT, there's a lot of things going on uh, with GDOT Aviation at our airport. Uh, they have uh, advised us they're willing to fund, I think it's about $150,000 plus dollars, uh, for crack seal and a restriping of the runway, which is something we really need. We've been having to uh, do that with uh, pressure washing the last several times. And uh, because of COVID, they've also sent us a note they do not think it would require any local match. So we should be able to do that without local match. The, the fuel farm is, uh, was inspected today by the Department of Agriculture for to be sure that the pumps were, you know, regulation and, and they were uh, measuring everything correctly. And it, uh, it passed without any problems whatsoever. And uh, so it's now ready for operation. We're working on the removal of the uh, old fuel system. Uh, that should probably happen uh, around the first week or uh, end of the first full week of August. Uh, also, uh, they're planning on being able to put a, uh, a mural on the uh, hangar there. Lead Edge has agreed to, uh, to do the mural and uh, we'll have to get a pressure washed and do a, get a little equipment like a scissor lift. But other than that, uh, everything uh, is looking good. We did receive notice today in the day's mail from uh, GDOT 
of the 2021 LMEG and our allocation of LMEG for 2021 is $677,856 and change. And uh, we'll have a 30% match on that. Uh, we'll talk about that a lot more maybe when we talk about our T-SPLOS meeting uh, on the, uh, in August. And other than that, uh, that's all I have. I, I do say I, I appreciate all the help and support of everybody. When, when I was I was out for a short period of time, and uh, you know, I, I feel like we just, you know, me got. I won't do it again, believe me. And so, uh, uh, so I appreciate everybody's support. Uh, still wish you know our staff very well. Wish uh, everybody that's been uh, had to deal with uh, you know with this situation uh, very well. And uh, we'll get back on board. And, catch up and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, run down 2020 and make it a, a very good productive year. So thank you all again. Mr. Chair, I have a question for Mr. Gay. Actually, I have several questions. Uh, on Hill Haven Road, I thought the last meeting or two or three meeting prior to this that we uh, accepted the bid for that road. Can you give me the status of update? I mean, I keep getting all these phone calls about that road. And I thought that we had moved forward with this. Yes, ma'am. There was some paperwork that the contractor had to get back in, uh, and then their uh, their bond count uh, bond company wanted uh, one little thing changed on that. But everything has been uh, sent to them, and uh, they'll be receiving, or maybe even received today, a notice to proceed. So they're ready to, to roll forward with that. And the other one on Owens. Uh, uh, that contractor had already got it back to us, and uh, so it has been awarded. They've been offered a notice to proceed. Okay, so, I'd like just to see some dirt moving cause, so I can stop getting these phone calls no, 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 on the right. road. It's With, beginning to look deserted down through there. Yeah. People are throwing trash and everything down through their mattress, I guess because, you know, there's no real travel to do that road. Right. Okay. I actually was trying to look at that today of uh, when that expires and then you know my plan and my recommendation would be to take proposals on what you guys would like to see done with the ball field and have uh, any interested party come and make a proposal to the board and let you guys choose what you feel is uh, the best uh, you know uh, short-term and best long-term use of that facility I actually had a gentleman call today about trying to uh, practice for a 50-plus uh, 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 age uh, softball tournament, and uh, you know, and of course, I, I had to direct him over to the person who currently has that under lease. But uh, that should be expiring, I think, uh, here very soon. Like August 15th. That's when I was thinking it was August, and then uh, of course we'll we'll look at. Okay. Uh, well, maybe there's something that we could add to one of the workshops that we got coming up that we can discuss it during that time. Sure. I I think uh, my my thought would be that uh, maybe we could even discuss it at your next meeting. Just All right, that's to, fine. To put out a uh, a, a RFP for everybody. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, and and I think I had kind of drafted an RFP, and it was it was like you say, it was not, it was uh, you know come and give us a proposal on uh, what uh, you know an option of what may be best. Because you're right, there may be things we haven't even thought of. But so what we'll do is we'll get that back on. I, I'll try to go ahead and uh, and get that RFP ready to go. And then you guys could look at it at your next meeting and just approve it, and we could send it out. From okay, home. thank you. Thank you. I don't have anything. Thank you. Mr. Bray? Oh, I'm good. about the
the airport there a while ago. We are going to try for an open house there in September. That's I don't correct. know that that's jail completely yet, but we're shooting for it. And also, Peaches in the Pines is moving until September, and I believe it's the Saturday after Labor Day. I okay. looked on my calendar, and I didn't have it. Well, well, hey, I'm good. That's all I had, really. Okay. Thank you. Oh, that's, fine. that's fine. I just had one thing I wanted to mention. You know, when we started building all of the, the fire stations, one of the big pluses of it, we thought, was how, you know, they would be integrated into the community and be a part of the community. Right. And just over the last couple of weeks, I've had the opportunity to ride by some of them. And I don't know if this is even possible, but they look empty. Now, if you go around to the back, there's vehicles there. Is there a reason that, I mean, a reason that we couldn't have at least one of the bay doors up? Other than just heating and cooling. Well, that's, and that's what I'm saying. I didn't know if those, if the bays were heated and cooled, and certainly we couldn't do that. But some, to come up with something to make it look more inviting, because our thoughts were that if, you know, somebody had an issue in the community, they could stop there and get right. their blood pressure checked or whatever. And at this point, you don't really know if anybody's there because they're parked in the back, which makes sense. But to, from, from the road, what you see is just looks like a closed building. Right. And it, or can they just can they just park in the front next to the to the front door maybe or something? I mean, that was one of our, our main points was that it could be, you know, a, a place, a safe haven even for somebody in the community or to get assistance. And they just don't look like they're open. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll certainly see what we can do with that. Another thing I'd like to see is I would like us to have a Meriwether County Fire Department sign and logo mm -hmm. on the building. Uh, because uh, I think that would add a lot to it as well. Well, it, or even if it had something out by the road that's maybe something you change out, says so open. I mean, I know there are times when it may not be manned, but something that just says welcome, open, or something. I don't know what the answer is, but if we could look into something, I think that would be beneficial. We, we will certainly do that. And that's all I have. And I'm still getting calls on, uh, I got a call this week from a gentleman or excuse me, last Friday, from a gentleman who uh, wanted to try to get uh, his insurance taken care of with the, the distances. So uh, we did contact uh, the fire department staff. They called him and uh, got him the letter. But there's still people that are out, uh, you know, dealing with that as well. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We have the need for a brief executive session to discuss uh, litigation and personnel.